KitchenAid was nice enough to send me a really nice attachment. This is their ice cream maker. I'm going to unbox it today and show you what's inside. So let's get into the box. I am very excited about this attachment. So there aren't too many pieces to this. There are three pieces. This is a little piece that actually attaches to your KitchenAid. And I'm going to show you how all of this works later on in the video. So that's piece number one. And then we have the actual paddle, which does the mixing of the ice cream. So that's piece number two. We also get instruction manual and there are also recipes in here. So we'll get into this. And here we have the actual main part of the unit. And this has a liquid in it. And it's very, very heavy. And you're going to have to freeze this a good 15 hours before first use. So here's the main piece of the ice cream maker. And this is extremely heavy. You're going to want to freeze this for 15 hours before you use it the first time. There's a little instruction quick start guide in here. And indeed it does say here, store the freezer bowl in freezer for a minimum of 15 hours. And then they give you a few simple steps. So just for fun, I'm going to weigh this out. Five pounds, eight ounces, and I'll switch it over to grams. 24.99 grams, so very, very heavy. And with this bowl being so heavy, we know that there's a lot of liquid in here that when frozen is going to really, really do a good job when we're making our ice cream. I've seen other ice cream makers that have walls that are not as thick as this. So it's nice to see that KitchenAid has actually provided a really thick wall, which just means that everything is going to stay colder that much longer. I wanted to show you these a little closer up. This here is the drive assembly, which is going to be attached to our KitchenAid. And this here is the paddle, and the official name for this is called the Dasher. And these two pieces go together like this. And the little teeth here are actually going to mesh together, and this is what's going to actually turn the mechanism. And I'll show you that in a little bit. So this piece here connects to the bottom of our KitchenAid, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. I have flipped my KitchenAid over because I want to show you how the little drive assembly attaches. But before I zoom in, I just wanted to show you this so that you can see where we're actually working on the machine here. So I've zoomed in quite a bit more so that we can see what's really going on here. Now the first thing that I have to mention is that you have to check your model to see what it looks like. You can see my model here has a little spring mechanism. Your model may not have that. Also, you can see that this is a flat piece here. On some models, there's something called a step. So the piece of metal will come up and it'll, there'll be a little bit of a, a step right in this area. So what I explained here with the little step and the spring has a lot to do with what hole you're going to use on the drive mechanism here. If I take this and I put it this way, you can see it goes on. If I flip it around the other way, the wrong way, you can see that it doesn't go on very well and you can tell the plastic, you want this plastic to butt right up against the top here. So I'll turn it around this way and it goes right on. The other thing I wanted to mention is that there are little rubber bumpers on each side and that just helps it stay on and it also protects your metal on your KitchenAid mixer from getting scratched. So I'm going to flip this over and then I'm going to show you how it all comes together. So now we're going to attach our bowl and right away you're going to notice that there are two dimples. There's one here and if we rotate our bowl you'll see that there's another one here and it's slightly different. So we've got one here and one on the opposite side. So depending on the model that you own, this bowl will only fit one way. 
On this machine, if I try to get the bowl in where this dimple is going to touch the back here, it will not work. If I flip it around, now it works. So I'll just very carefully get my bowl into place and then down here it just locks right in with that little spring in the back. Let me just zoom in on that area just to show you. This is an important step and you really want to make sure that your ice cream bowl is locked in correctly. So you'll notice that the little dimple fits perfectly in there. You can see that it's securely attached underneath the little locking plate. So at this point we know that our bowl is correctly installed and we have our drive assembly installed as well and the only thing left to do is to put on the dasher. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to pop it into the bowl and if this is all aligned properly when we take our bowl and bring it upward it should just lock right into place. So you just want to rotate this until you see the little teeth start to align properly lock it in and then bring the handle right up and now it's locked in place. And in case you're wondering by lifting up the bowl we're actually locking this into place so this little paddle or dasher is not able to fall so it's going to stay locked in at this point right here. One thing that I forgot to mention which is very important make sure that you have your KitchenAid mixer unplugged when you're installing the ice cream attachment. I have just plugged my mixer into the power, so let's turn it on, speed number one, and let's see how it works. So you can already see that this is going to be making some really, really nice frozen desserts. So I'm just going to back off my camera a little bit so I can give you an overview of the machine working. So I'll turn it on again, and let's watch. So one thing I forgot to mention is that this KitchenAid mixer is about 25 years old and it still runs perfectly fine. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed my unboxing and quick review of the KitchenAid ice cream attachment. You're going to see me using this attachment in upcoming videos on my YouTube channel, Big Like a Pro. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you wish. I really do appreciate that. That's it and I'll see you next time.